untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today's deck was recorded during the early access event, so thank you to Wizards of the Coast for letting me participate. So I was able to play on a fully unlocked account with a ton of gems, so I could preview some of the cards from the upcoming Brothers War expansion, which will come out on Arena on the 15th. And my Patreon supporters voted on a blue-white Urza Melt deck. We're playing four copies of Urza Lord Protector, a 3-mana 2-4 legendary human artificer, making artifacts instant and sorceries one cheaper to cast and if we combine it with the Mindstone and Weakstone we can potentially get Urza Planeswalker in play. So the Mindstone and Weakstone a 5 mana legendary artifact that has the Power Stone subtype as well and then when it enters we either draw two cards or target creature gets a minus 5 minus 5 on ton of turn and then it taps for double colorless and this mana much like Power Stones cannot be spent to cast non-artifact spells so we can use it to cast artifacts and also to activate abilities much like Urza's 7 mana ability, saying if we both own and control Urza and Mindstone and Weakstone, exile them and meld them together into the powerful Urza Planeswalker, which has 7 loyalty, lets us activate 2 loyalty abilities each turn, including a plus 2 that gives artifacts, instants, and sorceries a 2 mana discount and gains 2 life. We can plus 1 to draw to discard, 0 ability makes 2 1 1 tokens, minus 3 can exile target null and permanent, so we could potentially activate that twice and still have a 1 loyalty the Urza left over, and then the minus 10 says artifacts and planeswalkers we control gain indestructible until end of turn and destroy all non-land permanents. So a powerful sweeper effect. So that's our game plan. Try and get Urza in play on turn 3, ideally turn 4, Mindstone and Weakstone, and then turn 5, thanks to the Mindstone and Weakstone making two colorless, we can already melt them together and get the planeswalker in play to pull us ahead. And to make sure we can find both cards reliably, we're playing four copies of Impulse, which lets us take a look at the top four cards to put one into our hand. And then we're also playing four copies of the new Arcane Proxy, which is one of these prototype creatures. So we can cast it for seven mana, in which case it's a 4-3, or we can cast it for one and double blue, in which case it's a 2-1 that we can place early as turn three here. And it's a perfect follow-up to a turn two Impulse, because when Arcane Proxy enters a battlefield, if we cast it, Exile Target Instant or Sorcery card with mana value less than then or equal to the proxy's power from our graveyard, copy that card and we may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So that's a great way to get back our impulse early on and then once we cast it for 7 mana we can even get back the 4 mana Urza's Command which lets us choose 2 modes at instant speed between shrinking opposing creatures down giving them minus 2 minus 7 ton of turn, can make a tapped power stone token to maybe help us ramp into our bigger things, can also make a tapped construct token that has power toughness equal to the number of artifacts we control essentially and then we can also scry one and then draw a card another way to help assemble the various combo pieces and then we've got more two mana spells that the uh, proxy can potentially get back as early as turn three including two copies of destroy evil can kill larger creatures or destroy enchantments we've got fateful absence to destroy a creature or planeswalker give the opponent a clue token in return then also the new soul partition which we can use to maybe bounce an opposing creature make it too more expensive but we can even bounce our own permanence with it and then replay them at which point we don't have to pay the increased tax so kind of view this as a white bounce spell which is pretty unique so it has a few interesting applications like maybe we can bounce our own mindstone and weakstone and then replay it and then also two copies of negate which can also be nice especially with urza out only costing a single blue mana which is another reason why we have all these two mana cards is that they work very well with urza in play and then for single blue we can maybe protect urza from removal and the Celestis can also help us draw and discard, maybe gain some life, and can also maybe help us filter the colorless mana from Mindstone and Weakstone into colored mana, and then we can use the colored mana to cast our various spells, especially with Urza in play. And then, of course, we don't have a ton of creatures in the deck, so it makes sense to include a board wipe to potentially catch us back up against creature-heavy decks with Depopulate. And then finally, we've got two copies of the Temporal Anchor as another very powerful card draw engine. A legendary artifact says at the beginning of our upkeep, we can scry two, and whenever we choose to put one or more cards on the bottom of our library while scrying, we exile that many cards from the bottom of our library, and during our turn, we may play cards exiled with Temporal Anchor. So essentially, just always bottom the two cards from the top of our deck and those cards will be exiled so we can essentially draw two extra cards per turn with the temporal anchor so that will easily help us assemble urza plus mindstone and weakstone after a couple turns 
and then our mana base has Soaring City as interaction, plus Igancho, and we can potentially use the channel abilities with the mana from Mindstone and Weakstone, so that's another potential use for the colorless mana here. And then we've got a bunch of blue eye dual lands for additional mana fixing. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got Urza and the Mindstone and Weakstone, so if all goes according to plan, on turn 5 we could already get the Planeswalker out there. Our lands do come into play tapped at the moment, so we won't be able to play our 2-drop on curve. Up against the Felden, hitting us with 2 damage off haste. Okay. So we'll see if we want to commit Urza, or if we maybe play it slow and try and get immediate value from the discount Kumano and adversary yeah that's a lot of damage piling in probably need to play Urza as a blocker but we're probably not gonna keep it around alternatively I could destroy evil Kumano now let's play Urza also have the option of not blocking if we want to make sure to play Mindstone and Weakstone next turn. Alright, Shivan Devastator hits us for 4 here, but at least we can block pretty safely now. And then we'll wait a turn on blocking Felden. So we'll take out the Devastator. And next turn, we could already meld. Can even play Celestus, which then lets me play Impulse or Destroy Evil. So we actually had an awesome turn here. Can still take out Kumano. So hopefully that means I don't even have to put Urza in harm's way. Adversary 2 to haste. And another adversary, alright. So kill Kumano. Meld Urza next turn. That's exciting. Step one, probably attack first. Gotta get that value. And then activate. Alright, melded Urza in the very first game. So we've got a ton of abilities to choose from. So, what should I go for here? I'm at 4 life, so don't die to a lightning strike at least. Maybe we just make 2 tokens and then I can gain 2 life as well, so I don't die to a Shivan Devastator. Sure. So, 2 tokens. And then discount spells gain 2 life. And then I can still impulse. And find Temporal Anchor, perhaps. Ton of loyalty to work with. Happy to chum block. Kumano deals one to Urza. And the Reckless Storm Seeker. Alright. So, still a scary turn. But getting to untap with Urza Planeswalker is a pretty good feeling, I'll tell you that much. Felden goes after Urza, and then we could play Arcane Proxy, potentially even for 7 mana next turn. Just preserve my life total. Don't start fights you can't finish. Yeah, so I can gain a whole bunch of life here. Let's say I discount by 4, then I can play a 3 mana, which is actually 7 mana proxy, and then still play... Temporal Anchor as well. That seems great. I am Urza Planeswalker. Although I guess this let's see. Yes, yeah, still looking at the power of Arcane Proxy, but yeah, either way, this would work. And then destroy evil, take out Kumano. And then Temporal Anchor to completely pull ahead. Although we could have played a second Arcane Proxy too. Now Urza's ready to ultimate next turn. Wipe the opponent's board. So they kind of have to attack Urza here. 
All right, they had a lightning strike to clear a path. So they actually get us incredibly low down to two. Or they can go after Urza, which is what they decide to do instead. All right, put both of those on the bottom, which will exile. And then we still get to cast them. So how about we discount again? And then a three mana might stone and weak stone is probably good enough. Killing Stormseeker. And then we can impulse, see what else is on top of our deck, another impulse. And then I guess I cannot quite play Arcane Proxy for five mana. So I might have to discount again or I can impulse. And uh a lot of options here. Fateful Absence looks good. So yeah, I can discount two again to play another Arcane Proxy, that's probably fine. Also get more loyalty to maybe Ultimate Urza soon. And Impulse. And find another Arcane Proxy. Okay. So should have most angles covered. We're drawing at least three cards per turn. There's Urza. Another Lightning Strike's not bad actually. But yeah, our opponent's slipping further and further behind. They're doing their best. Uh, another Might Stone and Weak Stone. We can still cast here. No drawback to bottoming at this point. Soul Partition's nice too. So we can make a couple soldiers now. In addition to plussing, tap these for mana to play another one, and this can draw. So pretty much paid for itself. Depopulates, nice too. But I think we'll be fine without it. Cast another arcane proxy with impulse, and then now we've got negates available too. And how about Urza's command? Okay, that should do. And our opponent explodes, awesome! So yeah, Urza Planeswalker on our very first attempt. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hands could use a two mana spell to get back with Arcane Proxy, but I'm gonna try it. Urza's command to make a power stone can help ramp into temporal anchor. Still nothing. All right. So arcane proxy not looking too great here. Might stone and weak stone number two. So at least we're still probably looking at a uh, turn five might stone and weak stone after making a power stone token. And our opponent potentially respecting a counter spell as well plays into our game plan. Never mind, hostile negotiations to draw. So our opponent gets to play some mind games. One pile goes face up, one face down. And they only get to keep one of them. So I guess our opponent's trying to melt Titania here. Yeah, I think they're okay at getting Titania. They don't have Sanctum of Nature in play yet, at least. And we can take it out with Mightstone and Weakstone. And we can take a look at their graveyard. Cityscape Leveler, they can try and reanimate potentially. So that's scary. Loom Speaker, that's fine. And then Urza's Command, definitely making a Power Stone token. And then, I guess, cry one draw to maybe find some more removal. Do I want a land? Sure. Another proxy. So let's smite stone to draw. Ok, 
can't quite use the mana this turn. Unless we had drawn into the Celestus, I guess. There's Urza, so we're getting close to transforming it. Can potentially play Urza and transform in the same turn. There's Titania. Although it only triggers an upkeep, so even if they had the legendary land, they would have to wait a turn cycle. Opponent back up to 21. And I could play Arcane Proxy and get back Urza's command. That seems decent. Although, let's see, if I play Urza, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, I'm one short of actually transforming it. So I'm liking Arcane Proxy, maybe over Temporal Anchor, although both are reasonable. Could even play another Mindstone and Weakstone first, if I'm not mistaken, 6, 7, 8, 9. This essentially costs 3, so I guess we would be one short of doing that. Alright, in that case we'll just play Arcane Proxy for 7. Get back Urza's Command. And maybe go for a Karnstruct token. So yeah, Power Stone token and maybe Karnstruct token, just get the most board presence. Opponent cycles Approving Ground, which gains life with Titania. And our construct currently a 5-5. There's a hardcast cityscape leveler going after our power stone. Luckily we've got a backup. Although that's gonna keep attacking. Destroy Evil can take it out. So we can maybe wait till beginning of combat. So if I play Urza, play Mindstone and Weak Stone for four. Can still destroy evil, although I don't really want to expose Urza to removal if I can avoid it. So maybe Might Stone to draw. Can also bounce with uh, Soaring City here if needed. Depopulates. Also has its uh, advantages. So no shortage of options. If I destroy evil now. I can still Soaring City thanks to Mightstone also making mana for it. So that might be the safest option so that I also don't have to discard to hand size as much if they plan to unearth. And then I could attack with a Construct token and maybe even Arcane Proxy. Just get them to tap out for an Earth, basically. And then next turn, try and melt Urza. Right. Opponent's casting another leveler instead. Can float my mana. At least they're giving us some power stones in return. And then the question is do I want a Soaring City bounce leveler? Or do I just. Use another Arcane Proxy to kill it, and keep up Soaring City for next turn. I think that's safer. Backup Urza is useful. Okay, so a 3-man Arcane Proxy would suffice. Can Mindstone to draw first, maybe hit our land drops and keep Soaring City available. Negate could also come in handy. Yeah, what if I play Urza and then just pass? Then our opponent likely unearths a Cityscape Leveler. And they'll still have at least one attacking and destroying something. So maybe going Arcane Proxy for three. Get back, destroy evil. Kill Leveler. Attack. And then still have Soaring City and or Negate available. Opponent forced to trade Titania. Decides to jump. 
Okay. Pass it back. And hopefully they don't have the last level or enhanced to hard cast again. Since at least with Unearth they wouldn't be able to get the cast trigger. Only the attack trigger. Alright, so that's exiled. And opponent's probably just dead on board too, but we could also melt Urza, which is the more exciting play. And we'll even have negate backup. So play Urza. Transform. And we can go to town here. Make some soldier tokens or just remove the loam speaker. Alright, sweet. Thomas Synergy here. And yeah, the opponent leveling our Might Stone and Weak Stone actually wasn't too bad since we can still make use of all that colorless mana. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Celeste is in to depopulate against creature decks to buy us some time. And then Urza with his command. Facing a turn one Wormlet. So an artifact deck. Devil Urza's command does get better in multiples if we make several Power Stone tokens and or uh, the Construct tokens. Go for Celestus since we're likely to depopulate before we play Urza. Opponent will get to draw of Dissident sadly, but that's okay. Hope they deploy a bunch of creatures. And Amalgam. Alright. Opponent gets their counters. But we'll be able to reset the board now. And then next turn if I play Urza, I can still play a 3 mana Urza's Command. So that lines up perfectly. Another Dissident. And Mechanic. So what are we planning with Commands? Probably just drawing. Could go for another Depopulate, but at this point the board's under control, so I don't mind passing. Yeah, the constructs, and then maybe scry one draw card. Or I can still make a power stone first and make a construct with a second copy. Clay champion is scary, so that's a great incentive for the green-white artifact deck. Goes for an 8-8, and then of course still a counter from Dissident. At least Urza still blocks. So I wouldn't mind finding Destroy Evil to deal with the champion so we don't have to depopulate. So that also kind of reinforces commands to draw and make a Power Stone as opposed to making a Construct. And yeah, there we go. Might Stone and Weak Stone, that's what we wanted. Can draw with it. And then we won't quite have the mana to meld this turn. Four, five, six, one short. But I'll still go for it. And draw two, maybe find some more interaction. There we go. One mana, Fateful Absence. So that should prevent us from dying. Automaton. And then once we get Urza Planeswalker in place, it's going to be pretty hard for the opponent to recover. But let's see if they have a protection spell. They don't. They'll still make an artifact to trigger Dissident. Makes a 5-5. Can block hotshots. And then we still have Urza's command to maybe shrink down their creatures if needed. Alright, Bushwhack. I guess I was going to get Urza anyways. Unless, I guess I didn't block and then shrinking down would have been enough. 
Okay, that's a setback, but we'll still cast our command here. And then now scry one, and then am I planning to depopulate or make a construct token? I guess a construct is fine. Soaring City can bounce Dissidents. Yeah, if I had a little bit more mana, I could have actually channeled Soaring City to save Urza. Don't think I'll need it. Look for more card draw. So Urza down. And there we go. Temporal Anchor to pull ahead and find another Urza. And then I could also activate Celestis if I wanted to. Find a soul partition. Celestis can go. And then stay back for now. Might end up casting Depopulate here. We'll see. Another clay champion incoming. Yep. So I might have to chum block now. And then depopulate. Bottom, bottom. This one is legendary, so no point in playing a second copy. So we'll just have to wipe the board and then keep up soul partition. Could potentially soul partition my own Mindstone and Weakstone just to replay it. Maybe that's a play we want to make. And Gala Greeters. Alright, I guess we're not under too much pressure so I can afford to make the fancy play. Could have even replayed it last turn if I went for it. There's Urza. Okay. So Melded Urza coming up. Negate as backup. And our opponent concedes. Combo assembled. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And seems okay. Impulse to hit our land drops, depopulate to catch back up if we're up against the creature deck. And then Urza's command to make a power stone ramps into temporal anchor. Mono red's not what we wanted to see. Soul partition can maybe buy time. And there's an adversary with haste. Could take it with a plan of casting Depopulate, or we can just Soul Partition the Adversary now. Which I think I'm in favor of. Saves us 6 damage, essentially. And a mechanized warfare, I see. Okay, that's a cool one. So now Mishra's Foundry could deal three damage as well. Mindstone and Weak Stone, probably what I want here. And then second temporal anchor, not too useful. We'll try and go for Urza's command. And then next turn depopulates. Unless Mindstone and Weakstone stabilizes us enough. So this says if it would deal damage, it deals that much damage plus one. So we could also shrink down their team so we don't take any damage whatsoever. And make a Power Stone token. And then now depopulates. Looks good. Keep our life total nice and high. 
If they play a larger creature, we can minus 5, minus 5. And Foundry hitting for 3 is acceptable. Okay. Is it time for Temporal Anchor then? Or do we Mind to and Draw 2? That will make it easier to play Anchor next turn as well. Okay, we can channel Iganjo, so that's nice. Using the artifact mana. Play with fire deals 3, so the burn spells will add up quickly. And they could even pump with the author foundry here. Although Iganjo will still be enough. Okay, time for Anchor. Keep up Absence. And Happy Killing Foundry once again, wait for it to tap. And hopefully find an Urza soon. Epicure deals two when it enters, so there's Urza. And another Mindstone and Weakstone, perfect. Play Urza. Should be able to meld right away. And then definitely destroying this mechanized enchantment. And then maybe make a few soldier tokens. We got a backup might stone and weak stone in case a few burn spells finish off Urza. Okay, and the festivities deals with the one ones. Pretty good with the enchantment too, and a bolt. Alright, melt has been dealt with. Although at least the enchantment's gone too. Keep bottoming. And then Arcane Proxy can get back Urza's command. That looks good, although we can probably Mind Stone first and still do it. And then play Soaring City. Proxy. And Urza's Command. We'll draw, make a Construct token. And a backup Urza, perfect. Destroy Evil can deal with another Mechanized Warfare. Keep bottoming. Okay. So step one might be to attack. And then play Urza. Try to meld. See if there's burn spells in response. And then definitely want to gain some life if possible. And then maybe make some soldiers afterwards or we can draw. Fetch me more power stones. Can still Fateful Absence at instant speed. And Anchor can go. Alright, that should be good. Can still Urza's command here. Make another construct. And draw. While we have the discount, keep a Mind Stone and Weak Stone so we can meld again if needed. And, uh, yeah, that should be safe enough. Don't think we need to absence the Apicure necessarily. Alright, now I guess I'll just kill the Apicure to be safe.
opponent on going upstairs. Although next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Alright, lightning strike down to five. So two more burn spells could still get us. Epicure down to four. And a lightning strike down to one. Wow. What a game. Alright, so we got to see our Urza melt deck in action, and it's surprisingly consistent at assembling Urza alongside Mightstone and Weakstone, and I was also quite impressed by the Mightstone and Weakstone individually, just as a way to give us some card draw interaction, and the mana it generates often allows us to spend the two mana the same turn we played the five mana artifact, so it doesn't really feel like a super expensive card to play, since we can quickly make use of that mana, so the deck doesn't feel too clunky after all, and then the Arcane Proxy also played quite nicely, both getting back two mana spells and eventually Urza's Command, which was another great tool. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.